Uh, recently, my dad just passed away, and we had become more like best friends um, in the Word. And my dad was a, a strong believer of faith. He helped many people. He believed uh, in modeling what Jesus taught, which was love, humility, grace, kindness, mercy, discernment, truth, discipline, like all of it across the board is God. There's no, uh, he's just a God of love, or he's just a God of this, or he's just a God of that. He's all things in entirety. And we, we built a relationship in faith and on sharpening as iron sharpens iron, so the countenance of one man sharpens the countenance of another. Me and my dad started that journey when I first went to prison because I did not heed my mother and father's instructions, which they both raised us up in faith. Um, I chose to go my own route and to do my own thing, and it led me down that twisted, crooked road, which straight and narrow is the way that leads to life, and crooked and deceitful and lies and all the other things and tribulation comes with the other road and so many find it i stayed on that journey i didn't heed the counsel of my father and mother which i had two very good parents that were in faith and did the best that they could they weren't perfect because none of us are perfection is found in seeking christ christ is perfect christ's love will make you perfect christ's love will endure all things christ in our faith and fellowship with one another but i i got to the point where people keep kept coming up and saying, I'm sorry for your loss, I'm sorry for your loss, I'm sorry for your loss. My dad never looked at death as a loss. He looked at it as, we, we have a dash between two dates. Uh, all, all of us live, therefore all of us are going to die. And death, yes, it hurts, it hurts. And, and like I said, there's a grieving process. There's waves of grief that come. And it's important that we not stay stuck in the concrete and, and be so grief stricken of what we didn't get with that person or what we lost losing that person or what we don't get to have and share with that person anymore. However, how much greater should it be since we all live and we all are gonna die that Christ came and modeled and taught what he taught and rose from the grave so we too get to live again. That is the whole point of our faith. And I don't understand in faith why, especially people of faith, like we have such a hope because of what God gave us. We have, I, I mean, to think about it, we're, you're, you're dead this little two dash between two dates and whether you're eight or 80, you, you only get whatever you get right here on the temporal. The, the earthly thing is earthly. The eternity realm, the, the, the invisible realm, the spiritual realm goes on forever. And we get to share that either with Christ or deny him and be in, 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 in other spots that we, we should have never been. But we have to get back to the creator. We have to get back to the God that spoke all things into existence. The God who loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You, you hear the disciples and people talk about things and, and, and all of us in faith, like there should be such a hope. Like, does it hurt that my dad's gone? Does it hurt that my cousins are gone? Does it hurt that my grandpa is gone? Does it hurt that all these people have passed? Yes, they've passed, but the body, the vessel that carried the spirit is here in the ground, but the spirit moves on. It goes to be with one of my dad's favorite verses and he talked about it all the time and I'm gonna open it up real quick and read it is from Hebrews. He loved the book of Hebrews, like the historicity of our faith. He talked about it many times. And if you want to get closer to God, you have to dig into his word. You have to get into what God is trying to tell us and reveal to us in his words, in his love letter, in his history book, in his whatever it is to us. But one of my dad's favorite verses comes from Hebrews. I should have marked it before I got here. I might have it marked actually. Here we go. Hebrews 12. And and this, this is the focus and this is the glory and this is this is what gave him hope. And he, and he preached about it multiple times in di different churches and different sit-downs. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us and ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Now, it wasn't joyous to get beaten and whipped and killed and murdered and spit on and mocked. There was no joy in that. The joy was what was coming after he died. The joy was rising from the dead and living again. And, and people, <laughs> and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, today's age, we have a cloud. And everything goes up to the cloud, from our computers to everything else. And, and young people should get this the most. My dad taught this all the time. There is a great cloud of witnesses that goes before us. When I die, whatever point that is, if it's tomorrow, if it's when I'm 80, I, yeah, I wanted my dad to, to, to see his kids live, to be, uh, to graduate, to see his grandkids to graduate. Um, 
I, I feel like he was taken too soon. I feel like my cousins were taken too, too soon. I feel like some of my homeboys that died believing stupid beliefs, systems, and ideologies of man, of temporal things, died too soon. Yet, no matter what point we die at, if we don't have faith, we don't have hope. And the hope is that we get to see them again, that, that we get to go be with that great cloud of witnesses. So when you go to church, when you go to fellowship with other believers, we... All of us, I don't care your denomination. Like, if you're in Christ, we should be modeling what Christ taught. We should be in the faith, the way, the truth, the life. And model what he taught, his life, death and resurrection, Easter and Christmas. Those things are so much more important to us now. When we die, we go to be with where God has prepared that place for us. In my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you, and for you, and for me, and for all those who have gone before us. To go into that great cloud of witnesses. So now when we go to fellowship, wherever we go to fellowship, I don't care if it's the Catholic Mass. I don't care if it's Lutheran. I don't care if it's, I don't care your denomination at this point right now. I, I, I do think there's certain things that are biblical that, that, that you, you're off in la-la land on some of this stuff that denomination believe. Whoops. But that doesn't stop the fact that we need to all, as a family of faith and a great cloud of witnesses, when we go to worship in our worship services, we will enter into that worship with them, you guys. It is so amazing and awesome. I get to still worship with my father and my cousin and my grandpas and all those who have gone before us in faith. And that's what we have. That's that hope. Oh, death, where is your sting? <laughs> there is none. Now, do I break down and cry sometimes because I miss having my father around? I can't call him. I can't text. I can't ask him, what would you do in this situation? Yes, but he's taught me so many things. I've got to experience and enjoy so many things with him. And we have to remember all the things that were good. I, I see lots of people that will, that somebody dies from drugs or gang violence or something else. Remember who the person was, not the thing in life that entangled them and ensnared them and caught them up and, and, and basically took everything that they were. Remember the good things. Don't remember that that person was an alcoholic. Don't remember that that person might have been a drug addict. Don't remember, don't remember all the evil. Remember the good. It's the good in which we, we share the joy in. The joy that was set before him was not all the evil and torment and punishment and, and pain and sickness and faith. We have hope. We have life. We have a joy. And it's such a joy, people. Like, <laughs> oh, man. Like, I luckily got to have a good relationship with my father after prison. But I realized I was in prison of my mindset long before I ever went to prison. And most people don't go to prison and stay in this prison of their mindsets. As a man thinketh, so they are. As you think it, so you are. So are you thinking the things of eternity, of God, of the creator that came down and gave us what he gave us in his word? Or are you off in la-la land on, I, I think and feel and not what God has said and done? People, we have such a joy that's set before us because of what Christ came and accomplished. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know the Father. If you want to get to know our creator and our God, go to the Bible, go to his word, dig into it, marinate on it, and pray and worship with others. And fix your eyes on that because we are going to be with them. When we enter into that worship service, we enter into the, the almighty of all worship that's going on and praising the creator that created all this. The sun, the moon, the stars. I, I created those things. And God said, God said, let there be light. And there was. The, the, the invisible spoke all visible things, all temporal things into existence. But our spirit will live on and go to be with him. And then there will be a new heaven and a new earth and new things to come. For all those who believe in him, People, focus on our Creator. Focus on Him. Focus on that. Don't get so caught in grief and grief-stricken that you stay stuck in concrete and you focus on the temporal. You will destroy that person in their name and their memory and their honor. Don't do that. Be thankful for all the times we got. Be thankful for all the times we get. Be thankful for all the memories. Keep the memories alive of those people, of their faith, of their love, of their generosity, of their spirit. And one day we will go to be with them too. Doesn't matter if it's tomorrow. 10 days from now, a week from now, a year from now, whatever it is, be on that faith. Be about your father's business of this great cloud of witnesses that we all get to share with. They're just passing the baton of faith throughout the Bible of human history to us, and we are going to pass it to our children, and hopefully they pass it to theirs, and hopefully they pass it to theirs, and we keep passing this baton of faith, and we keep running this great race that we get to live in and have, and this hope because of what Christ came and accomplished and did on that cross. Father, please help all of us to come to you and to know you and to find our true identity and self-worth and all the things that you do and all the things that you are. Father, help us to mm, 
know that we, we are with that great cloud of witnesses and we enter into worship with you daily. Let us meditate on that. Let us focus on that and let us serve as you served in humility and love and grace and kindness and come to be who we truly are in you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, all men, love God, love people, love y'all.